Good morning. I would like to begin with a prayer. If you're so, if you're willing, please bow your heads with me. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me deliver my message today with honesty, grace, vulnerability, and diligence so that I may glorify you in what I say today. Please speak through me the good news as I present to your children the story of how my faith came to be, and please help me express that this is not a story all about me, but about you and your benevolence, light, and divine beauty. Amen. One thing I don't have written down is that I didn't know I was going to be this emotional this morning. Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can get through this without too many tears. I was raised in the seventh row pew on the far right side of the sanctuary. And while the exact order of my family members sitting in the pew has changed over time, Barbara Shields, also known as my granny, has always been directly to my left and my mother, Susan Brooks, on my right. However, through kindergarten through fifth grade, three Sundays a month, I trailed my way behind Jana Stoner after future to what we little kids called little church in the chapel. There I raced other students to find the book of Matthew first in our Bibles. <laughs> my biggest competition in this race was Jensen Bird. <laughs> but I didn't care because I'm going to win next week. I didn't. <laughs> More than book Bible book races happened in Little Church, though. Friendships were formed, lessons were taught, and bonds were planted. There I met my two best friends, Owen Jennings and Van Carlton. There, there I heard countless Bible stories and really began to learn about Christ. And there I grew tightly knit bonds with Jana, Granny, and so many other parental role holders in my life. However, I do not want to discredit my biological parents, they're the ones to pray with me my nightly, now I lay me down to sleep, and daily, God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. But much more than that, through the ups and downs of our family, they have represented the unconditional love of God as mine and my brother's parents. The bountiful love that they have for us is so great that I can only imagine the love of God has for each of us. They were my first signs of Christ. I'm not going to dive into the nitty gritty, but I've had to fight quite a few battles in my 18 years of life. In those first few moments of despair, I stuck to what I was taught and I believed it. God is with me, God loves me, God understands, and God will get me through this. These affirmations to, to myself were helpful. They truly did give me strength when things felt so heavy. But as a fallen being, I found myself reaffirming God's truth less and less. At my lowest, as it was, excuse me, at my lowest, it was as if I had got forgotten who Christ is. It was eighth through tenth grade when I was my furthest away from Christ. Yes, in the back of my mind, he was there, but I was not living my life as if he was. No, I did not do anything outrageous or break anyone's hearts, except probably my parents when I act out in teenage rage but I did let sinful, secular things consume me. I pitied myself for what I had gone through and craved the pity of others. I spent more time gossiping than talking with God, and I let myself go down such a dark path that I felt hopeless, alone, and forgotten. For three years, I could have been considered a nominal Christian. It was not until my junior year of high school that I recommitted my life to Christ and realized that he was there for me in my darkest moments. And if I had just let him into my heart, I would have found peace from my life. But let me clarify that this is not something that just happened overnight for me. I did not just open my Bible on a whim and recommit. What really happened was I was so tired of feeling sorry for myself that I was ready to do anything to find happiness. And that is when I remembered that I had met a man named Boethius in my 10th grade humanities class at Covenant School. I had read his Consolation of Philosophy and recalled what he had taught me. Happiness is not found in fame, power, riches, honor, or pleasure. Rather, happiness can only be found in pure goodness. And this pure goodness is only found in Christ. After this recollection, I decided to dedicate myself to the Lord again, but this time we would have a real and raw relationship. But please note that feeling sadness is still valid and real no matter who you are, and depression it does not just disappear. Instead, by surrendering myself to God, I was presented with the skills to beat these obstacles through Christ, and that is what I did and still do. 
Using the strength given to me by God, I was able to swallow my pride and ask for help. It was my first time since elementary school that I had the strength to do so. By submitting myself to the Lord, I was able to let go of my many sinful habits, including my pride and jealousy. Yes, I still hunger for these ungodly desires, but I find it much easier to say no to these hankerings to gossip, pity myself, and frown upon others because my head gets a little too big. And because I surrendered myself to the Lord, I am able to stand here in front of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and share my story truthfully and passionately. In less than four months, I will be starting my next chapter of my life by moving to Buchanan, West Virginia, for schooling at West Virginia Wesleyan College. In doing so, I will be saying many goodbyes and farewells and giving endless hugs and high fives as I depart. And once I get to school, I will relearn, I will have to relearn how to share a bathroom, teach myself how to use their washing machines, and expand my food palette because I have decided that I can't be picky forever. I will be attending a new church, making new friends, learning new lessons, and growing new bonds. But most importantly, I will, be, I will continue living my life for Christ and sharing my voice in their choir and chapel services. I am so excited to continue my school career in such a beautiful Christian college with classmates that share similar desires as me. And while I mourn the chapter that I am leaving and coming to an end to, I rejoice and am glad for the next chapter to begin. I am ready for whatever may come my way at Wesleyan because the Holy Spirit is right there with me and he guided me there for a reason. I can only pray that I am able to show the light of Christ as well as Jana, Granny, Mom, and so many of you. I feel as, I, as if I could keep talking, but I think my message is clear enough. But to put it in shorter terms, John 16:4 explains the true reason of why I'm a Christian. For Christ is the way, the truth, and the light, and I may only be able to be run, excuse me, and only I will be able to re, be reunited with the Father through him and him alone. Since there is nothing I want more than God, here I am sharing my faith and dedicating everything I do to him. It is an absolute honor to be able to be here today, and an even greater honor that the Lord has shown me has chosen me as his daughter. I pray that each of you feels God's, feels God's presence the same way that I do and are able to submit to him as well if you have not already. In fact, I urge you to open your heart to the Father. Please let him in and your life will be substantially better. It is not about how much you read your Bible or go to church, while those things are important, but about if you live and how you live with through him and bear witness to the truth. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Alexandra Biddle and I'm a senior at Huntington High School. Before I begin my testimony, I'm gonna ask that you put your right hand in the air, wave it around like you just don't care. Put your left hand in the air, wave it around like you just don't care. Now clap them together and let us pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for bringing each and every one of us here into your house this Sunday morning. You have given us a community of believers with which we get to worship. We are blessed with this family that pushes us through love to grow closer to you. We are seeds you are planting, and these people are the soil you have grounded us in. As Laura and I make the transition from this chapter of our lives to the next, I ask for your guidance and strength in trusting your plan, but moving forward with the support and foundation with which this congregation has provided us. It's in your name that we pray, amen. So I've lived in the same house since I was about three years old. And one of the first things that I remember about this house now is how ugly my mom thought our green carpet was. I'm talking like the 1960s hard, like really dark, ugly green carpet. Um, you would have wanted to rip it up too, believe me. Um, but I love that green carpet because when I was around nine years old, I sat on my living room floor with my little mini prayer book my Nana gave me and I cried to my friend named Jesus because I wanted him to save me from the bad things that I did. I was selfish and mean to my friends sometimes, but I knew that if I prayed the words in that book, everything would be okay. One day I would get to live with the best father in the best place called heaven. That was the message of the gospel for me then, and it's the same message of the gospel for me now. But let's start at the very beginning. I grew up going to church. 
My grandparents, especially my grandmothers, were huge faith influences for me. I would wake up in the morning with my Nana singing to God at the kitchen table. She brought me my first hymnal, and years later, music is still how I talk to and listen to my father. I went to St. Joseph Catholic School starting in pre-K and attended Mass every Friday. Going to St. Joe gave me a great foundational understanding of theology and the Trinity. This paired with the stories of Noah's Ark, Queen Esther, and Samson and Delilah, you can best believe I knew of my man God. But I didn't just want to accept him into my heart because my friends around me were doing so. I knew that salvation and baptism came from a personal relationship with Christ and a deep understanding of what it meant to be a Christian. Even after I had had this conversation with God on that ugly green carpet, it took me about two weeks to tell my mom and my grandmother about my decision because I wanted to be sure I understood the magnitude and the weight of the cross I was taking up to carry for the rest of my life. After that, the process of baptism began. And when I waded into those waters at the age of 11, even though the water was burning hot, I literally got burned, <laughs> I felt a joy and relief in knowing that someone would be watching over me for the rest of my life. I chose for the hymn that day, Heavenly Sunlight. The first verse is the perfect testament to what I felt. Walking in sunlight all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. I continued to pursue a personal relationship with God, even as we didn't really go to church much that year. But my faith journey was about to travel somewhere I had never imagined. In December of 2016, I sat in an airport beside my mom. With the ticket in my hand shaking from nervousness, you could barely make out the final destination, Nicaragua. I felt like such a baby Christian. How in the world could God use me to make a difference in the lives of kids on a different continent? How could he speak to them through me when I didn't even speak the same language as them? And I'll tell you how. Soccer and crafts. While at the orphanage in Nicaragua, I discovered that introducing others to Christ can happen through so many different mediums. It's truly the moments of kindness and compassion in a soccer game or decorating notebook pages that show others what it means to live a life for God. Missions give your, place, give your heart a place to be on fire for the Lord. Every summer, I help with Lewis Memorial Baptist Church's Backpack Vacation Bible School. This VBS is put on at a church on 8th Avenue so that we can better connect and bring the message to kids who live in underserviced areas. Underserviced as in many of them don't have a reliable food or gospel source. We go door to door in Huntington inviting kids and teens to come play games, do crafts, eat, but most importantly, hear the word. So many of them are desperately looking for a guide or a parental figure to cling to. And through our love and engagement with them, some of them have found that in Jesus Christ. The joy I have during that week is unmatched. And it inspires me throughout the year to be that guiding light for others in the classroom, the hallways, the courts, and even in my home. And all of this goes to show the enormous impact of God on my teen years. Being involved in numerous youth groups and church camps has given me a network of support from other believers. I didn't want to leave Miss Jana's class and venture up to the scary youth group, but it was necessary as I grew, and I'm so glad I did. Whether it be singing songs around the campfire at Cowan or almost killing Brett Hensley on the youth ski trip when I couldn't get on the ski lift and it actually hit him, knocking him to the ground. <laughs> Going to Winter Jam or getting messy in a food or color war, being in the youth group gave me a purpose and a family. Throughout this time, I was also really struggling with anxiety. I didn't want to give up control. I wanted things to be perfect, and only I could accomplish that, or so I thought. After many nights spent feeling worried about what was to come or whether I would be worth something after getting an award, God took over. I was laying on the pull-out couch at my grandparents' old house doing a devotional, and the song Oceans by Hillsong United came on. The lyrics, you call me out upon the waters, the great unknown where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep, my faith will stand. It was at this moment that I really started to face my anxiety and perfectionist tendencies. I wanted what God wanted, and it wasn't easy from there, but it was a start. Even now, as I transition from adolescence to adulthood and have been faced with some of the greatest decisions I will ever make, my faith and trust continues to grow. Jonah and the whale was always one of my favorite Bible stories growing up, and I've thought back to it more times than I can count in the last year. For those of you who may be a little rusty on this story, God commands Jonah to travel to the foreign nation of Nineveh to preach repentance to the people. 
But Jonah doesn't listen, and instead he runs from God. So while sailing, they run into a huge storm and Jonah gets thrown overboard, to which God's response is to save him by having a giant whale swallow him. For me, the moral of this story is to listen to where God sends you. And I've prayed that phrase, send me, ceaselessly throughout the college process. When I made my final decision driving home two weeks ago, there were tears in my eyes as I heard God's voice and was reminded of his grace and his comfort. This fall, I will live in a new place with new people, but our God and my faith in him will be the same, if not hopefully greater. Ultimately, as I wrote my testimony, I was reminded that faith is such a journey. There are highs and there are lows, but God will provide. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me, Psalm 23, 4. And no, this was not intentional. This was a coincidence. I didn't know that was the verse today. <laughs> he will grow our faith. For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17, 20 through 21. He will put, people, he will put you in people's life when they need you most, and he will put people in your life when you need them most. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created, Esther 4.14. He will give you the strength to face moments you didn't know you could, whether it be raising a hallelujah as your weapon in the face of fear or just waking up some mornings. Trying to share my whole faith journey in 15 minutes is no easy feat. But if today has revealed anything, it is that my life with him is infinitely abundant. I can't re wait to rewrite this in a year or five or 10 or 17 and see the many more amazing ways in which he has used me to further his kingdom and the lives of those around me. Thank you and praise God.